I am Karalamba. All right, hello everybody. We're casting another match from round two of the Karan Lombar Carnage Cup. Um, let's just get right into it. In the bottom left of Ultala, the great step of rune, we have Dol Guldur being played by Pro Rock, and they're going straight for three slave farms and running their fourth shade across the map. And in the top right, we have Flame of the West playing Rivendell. Uh, this should be a fun matchup to see. Three orchards, or no, two or no, yes, this is another orchard. Three orchards and four orchards. So a uh, big economic start here for Flame. Uh, and what I'm assuming is going to be a forward jail here, indeed. Um, not too close to the base, but close enough. Uh, we're going to have to see how quickly Flame is going to be able to get some units out to address this aggression. So we've got the Breland encampment uh, on the far side of the jail. So, you know, you might have hoped it was here for some kind of um, cheese like this, but we'll see how it plays out. Back home is not much. We've got the spider layer going up already, which will mean we'll see how much he commits to the broken rabble up top here. But if Flame goes for Bounders in order to counter the Broken Rabble coming for his Orchards, uh, they'll be met by Spiders. And I believe the Dunadine Gathering is already going up for Flame, which means... Well, this could mean a few things. Um, obviously, the Dunadine Outriders will be uh, pretty effective against the Broken Rabble, but the Pikes will be just as easily purchasable from the Jail here. Uh, and I believe the Spiders do a pretty decent job against the Dunedain Outriders. So it feels like both players are kind of playing a little bit of... Trying to be one or two steps ahead of the other here. Flame by now should see the Broken Rabble coming for his Orchard. The NPC horses obviously do. Um, and Bounders are already heading across the map. So this second set of Bounders is going to... Oh, Flame didn't even bother to allow... Uh, Dol Guldur to get any power points or any damage off uh, with this battalion here. So losing half of it to the fortress and the remaining half is at half HP. Um, not going to get much damage done with the Broken Rabble. The Jailers over here uh, waiting for their chance to attack, which doesn't really work for units that die over time. Um, yeah, these guys not going to be able to get much done here. Um, I don't think the Bounders got anything done on this side of the map. We know we had a uh, two battalion, or is this one or two? It looks like on the minimap too, but it's just one battalion of fel Felbrood. Missing the trample on these guys, but get uh, gonna get it now, and the Spider's gonna be able to get one hit off. Now we have a bigger clump of Dol Guldur on the side here. Uh, gonna try and get on top of these Bounders. They should be able to get good damage off on the Bounders here. Uh, Tangato Hide just went off as I turned around. I just want to make sure I know when the Spire of Sorcery goes up. It would be pretty early, but as far as I can tell, this is not going to be a very effective attack from Dol Guldur. We've already got the Breland Towns Guard to try and deal with the Spiders, but it's going to be a matter of chasing them off before the Orchards go down. The Outriders are going to find the targets they know they can handle while the Jailers are occupied. Not able to get this orchard down, so they're, we're going to use the, um, uh, where is it here? We're going to use Chill of the Grave to get some poison damage off on the Spearman uh, Dunedain. I believe the trample from the Fell Brood happened just before their pikes could come out, which is a bit of a shame there. But uh, ha most of them are going to get caught by the Breland Towns Guard there. So all in all, a wall hub to protect the builder here. Uh, I can't tell if the orchard was destroyed or canceled. But um, I don't know if Flame knows where the jail is. These spiders are going to finally get some real orchard damage off here. Uh, the Dunedine are not going to be able to deal with them in time. And they're actually quite low health from that trample from previously. Going to lose one spider in that trample. The Builder cancelled the Wall Hub and is now actually building the Orchard, uh, but without uh, Dol Guldur not sending them to attack. 
Flame did cancel that orchard, and uh, these spiders are getting on top of these uh, Dunedain Outriders right here. Giving them the, the debuff. Oof. Alright, Dolgaldor gonna finally chip away at this orchard as it was getting close to level 2. Getting that damage off is gonna be huge. Alright, so Dolgaldor kind of picking up the damage from where they left off. It was a, a bit of a slow start in terms of harass for them, but I think uh, they're starting to get a little bit of that damage off on these peripheral orchards and causing Flame to have to uh, start and stop his production there. More of a nuisance than anything else, though, because let's see, we're uh, we're tied in max CP. Uh, maybe Rivendell just pulled ahead. Indeed. Um, and a, a higher standing army. Reinforcing this area with some Breland Townsguard, as there's still one more battalion of spiders in the back, dealing some damage. The Spearmen Dunedain are going to come after... These ones, we'll see if the spiders notice in time, as there's a large skirmish being reinforced by this brood over at the jail. Uh, Rivendell going to be defeated here. More spiders coming to back them up. Yeah, that's going to be it. Enough jailers here to handle everything while the spiders go to wreak some more havoc in the back lines. Uh, Hero coming out, just Thrain. Thrain. I'm a big nerd for the pronunciation, and I, I've never known if the dwarves are truly Dine and Thrine or Dane and Thrain. Because they're dwarves. Do they follow the elven pronunciation? Who knows? Uh, Dunedain actually getting a pretty good um, angle on this jail. It's going to be tough for Dol Guldur to get around this choke. Uh, so I think he's going to finally lose the jail. Uh, he's not been able to rebuild this uh, triangular positioned uh, orchard here. So Flame kind of getting surrounded here and losing this orchard as well, not allowing this one to get to level 2. This one has finally leveled up, but in terms of uh, fully upgraded production buildings, uh, he's going to be significantly behind Dol Guldur, who's now sitting at almost all level 2s. Losing this orchard, Chill of the Grave going down again. Tongato hides still in the bank for Rivendell, but with the Broken Rabble on top of these spears... Flame's going to lose a lot of uh, his army here. Felbrood noticing just in time. There's actually two battalions in there. And actually, uh, yeah, did did Tongado Hide get used? No, actually just these units uh, proved to be a bit stronger. And was able to handle the, the slow decaying units. We might lose the builder though if we're not careful. Nope, okay, he's going to build a wall hub really quickly. Reflexes on that are pretty fast. Uh, there's enough spiders on this orchard to definitely put it in danger, but uh, he, he's not really willing to risk the spiders' lives at this point. He wants to keep all the units he has, because at least in terms of standing army, Dolgaldor is lower. Um, Thrine getting caught out here. Uh, definitely just going to get murdered in the streets. Spiders looking for some juicy targets. So many spiders. I didn't even notice this kind of southern base over here. Rivendell kind of building an outpost down here to deal with some of these uh, these uh, farms here, these mills. What are they called, for real? Slave mills. Slave farms for Mordor. Spiders getting on top of the orchards up here. Gonna lose this one as well. Putting Rivendell, uh, now tying Rivendell uh, with Dolta Guldur in terms of max CP. Um taking over this mill and spreading orchards across the bottom here. I kind of like this. Um, it's kind of interrupting Prorok's um, harassment path. And now he's kind of established himself on this entire eastern side of the map, kind of bro broaching into the south. And now Rivendell, with a large army, is coming for Dol Guldur uh, without as much infrastructure at home. And even having these high-level Breland Townsguard on top of this level 2 mill, um, lots of damage being done. Spire of Sorcery is out, but not enough um, units to turn into Risen Dead as we've been focusing on spiders. A well-timed uh, tactical strike here from Rivendell with a large, surprisingly large force uh, from a place that uh, Prorock did not expect. I'd love to see that, actually. Very, very interesting, because, you know, when you have this cav and you're, you're kind of all over this person's main base, you think you know what they have in production, so good on Flame for kind of taking a not a very you know 
conventional approach to building up his army. We have many meetings to reinforce this attack. Going for the eco-buildings first, which have popped refreshed slaves and infestation. But this mill is toast. This base is toast. There's only broken rabble. There's no spire of sorcery to get the risen dead. The spiders aren't going to find anything that matters over here. Maybe an orchard or two. But this is a massive, massive attack. We do have the wolves and chill of the grave available for Dogledore, but I think... Maybe he's waiting for the many meetings summoned to disappear before doing that. Gonna find an orchard over here. Um, the Breland Townsguard are all over these spiders, though, so I don't know if they're gonna be able to escape. Yep, see, they're covering the escape there, losing a battalion, maybe. Nope, one one gets away with it. But down here, it's it's looking scary. Spawn of Karkaroth still available. And the many meetings uh, units are about to disappear, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see the wolves... Any second now to save the base, but it's not enough in time to <laughs> save any of the production buildings at all. Dolgaldur has cash, but no production. Absolutely no production. Only slave mills. A ruinous tower. A couple spiders. Wow. Excellent play there by Flame of the West. Pro Rock had some pretty scary um, spider harass that, was, that definitely would have <laughs> uh, ended a player like me, but I think Flame was able to surprise him with a large force here and now has complete control of this map. Is not leaving anything to chance. What is this? 875 max CP? Yeah, this match and game belongs to Flame. I don't normally do this, but I'm going to fast forward here because there is no way, mathematically, that that is going to end well for Pro Rock. So, um, excellent play. Excellent play. Great attacks from Pro Rock, but an even greater counterattack from Flame, and he's going to take game one. So... Um, I'm going to pause, get into the replays, and start up game two in just a second. All right. All right, here we are with game two of this match between Flame of the West and Pro Rock. Flame won the last game um, as Rivendell versus Dol Guldur. And we will see in the bottom left, Flame is returning with some Woodland Realm. So sticking with the Elvish factions for this match. And in the top right, we have Harad again. We saw... Um, Nosy playing Harad on this map uh, in my last cast. On the other side, we have just two bazaars for Harad so far. I'm always curious to see what the openings are for Harad since the beta came out. Um, whether it's going to be Mahud, we've seen Corsairs. Um, whereas in beta testing, I think that most of the beta testers preferred the, the Outpost and Warlord start. This architect is going into hiding. I'm um, going to put a sneaky Mahood gathering out. Okay. Does not want this to get scouted, apparently. Uh, for Woodland Realm, we've got a uh, Sylvan clearing in the back of the base, and we're going immediately for the upgrade. So I think what we see here is Flame is anticipating a Mahood start. Uh, and obviously, in the very, very early stages before you can get the outpost out, yes, we will see the Guayrochin um coming out to counter any mahood harass that may be coming our way um fourth bazaar and definitely a mahood start for pro rock so already i think pro rock's going to be on the back foot this match uh turns out uh <laughs> hiding your building to prevent scouting doesn't matter if your opponent can just kind of guess what you have i don't believe yeah no i was gonna say we didn't see the the scouting power out for this. It's just um, kind of going with what the meta is right now. So we've got the Guayrachin on the field. And we'll see if they stay home to defend or if... I mean, they can't get any harassment done. So they might as well just kind of patrol around the base, make sure nothing bad is going to happen. Uh, we've got a builder hiding over here. Where is the rest of Woodland Realm's structures? I mean, it must be just that between the upgrade uh, to level 2 plus the 450 Guayrochin has not allowed him to be building too much else. I don't see any proxy buildings or anything like that. So we're just now getting our third um, uh, hunting shrine out for Woodland Realm. So kind of the opposite start from last game where we went directly for four orchards. <laughs> uh, he should see the Mahud uh, gathering around for uh, and he's, once again, Flame does not allow uh, his opponent to gather any power points, any damage, any XP. Um, these Mahud are not going to last very long. Whereas uh, 
these uh, Seagull Mythia, the Dagger Warriors, are going to go head to head against the Mahood, and they are not they are not going to win that battle. So they're going to retreat. We've got the Horn of the uh, is it the Horn of the Serpent Lord? Yes, Horn of the Serpent Lord. Um, going to try and I don't know keep these guys alive for a little bit longer, distract the horses for a bit longer. I I think those guys are toast no matter what. So um, it's just buying him a little bit of time to maybe kill these guys, but. Uh, Woodland Realm's own horn went up for the Thelemythir, uh to keep them alive for that. And uh, Flame is going to find himself, at least military-wise, at a, at a significant advantage. But I think Harad has a little bit more of an economic advantage. So we do have 400 max CP, a little bit more money. And now he does have the outpost out to counter the... Um, the Guayrochin, and we're going to find this out right now. So the Guayrochin are going to get the trample off on the Mahud, uh, and with enough control and enough timing, they are actually going to be able to get away. So a bit of a disappointing loss there for Pro Rock. I think in order to deal with this, I would love to see... Yeah, okay, we're getting some more bazaars out. I think the only thing Pro Rock can do at this time is try to expand structurally. There's only one battalion here that can really do any damage to um, eco buildings right now, so he's gonna have to figure out what he wants to do to to deal with these guys. And I like the idea of the headhunters, but he needs the pikemen to just be standing right on top of them for for it to work at all. Okay, we're hitting level two now, so we're gonna get the healing and replenishment from the spearmen. These two dagger warriors are uh, there for moral support, mostly. Yep, between with the horse archers, it's going to be a bit of a game of cat and mouse. Who's going to try and get the range damage off first? Yeah, I think I like this from Flame. He has no reason to try and get damage off with his horse archers. He's got the advantage, so there's no need to take unnecessary damage. Sigil Mythir getting on top of this um, low-income bazaar, uh, but it is kind of blocking the way through this passage. The Architect is there, possible target for later. And now there's enough infantry to get on top of these pikemen so that the Headhunters are going to be absolutely crushed by the Guayrachin. Textbook work here from Flame of the West. Going to ignore the trample on those guys to get the trample on these ones. Keep his Sigil Mythir alive. They're almost level level 2. I kind of hope he, he allows the Sigil Mythir to get the rest of these headhunters to try and get that level. Level 2 makes such a big difference. But he's just going to go for... Uh, just going to go for the trample. A couple of Thelemythir uh, getting picked off by these headhunters that were left alive. But he is going to save them with the trample and get the level 2 with the Sigil Mythir. And, oh, well, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, that was just an absolute uh, meta prediction there from Flame. Absolutely crushing um, ma the Mahood start and getting a huge advantage on the map. So, <laughs> two and done in less than 20, 30 minutes. Well done, Flame. He's going to advance on to the next round. Uh, GG's Pro Rock and... Uh, Awesome. All right. See you guys for the next cast. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.